Welcome back, Lee. We don't know who's going to talk, but I guess I will. <laughs> Welcome back to Completely Clueless here. And we're talking about Picasso. Picasso When 3. we left, we were talking about how to do a, um, a movie. Yeah. You can create a movie in Picasso from your pictures, incorporate sound, so you can have a background music track. We were actually uh, playing with it offline here and found that we could have a movie in our movie. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Because Picasso does more than just document or index your photographs. It'll also index yeah. your uh, movie clips. Yeah, so so maybe, again, you've started. got a digital camera at home, and most digital cameras allow you to shoot short video clips yeah. with sound and everything, and they're, they're pretty nice. That's exactly what we did here. So uh, we're going to touch here on, real quickly on the, uh, on the interface for creating movies. And uh, we've actually got a little, let's kind of show this for just a second. Yeah, we got a title screen that came up. Right, added a title slide just in a few minutes, and here's a little video clip with some... Uh, folk dances down in Mexico on, on your trip, and eventually it'll go through those video clips, and it'll just go on to the regular photographs. And, and the nice thing while, is we're, we're previewing it here. We could actually stop somewhere and edit it, remove pictures, Exactly the right, because down at the bottom, you see the little marker here that lets you move around. Notice what happens below that marker as you're moving this around. Mm -hmm these pictures show. So if you get a picture like this, you say, oh, I don't really want that. You can just right click and remove it from your movie. Just that, that easy. easy. Oh, it's so, so easy. So a great, great little application for uh, creating movies. And uh, then, of course, you can share those movies online. And that's the next thing we'll talk about. Um, how do you, again, how do you get these pictures out there for people to see? Yeah, well, it's nice that Google shares their web space and actually will let you set up an account to publish your pictures online. Right. And once they're online, it gives you all kinds of options that you can also have them printed at various locations. It's, it's pretty cool. And, and so let's say I want to I wanna take a, a group of pictures, and I'm going to say I want to use these. Oh, let's say I want to use these pictures here. And you see the blue line that surrounds the picture. That mm -hmm. lets me know it's selected. So I can hold down my control key on my keyboard and say, okay, I want that one. I want that one, I want that one. So you select the pictures that you want to upload. Okay. And then there's a button right here that says share. Okay. And when you click on that button, it's going to allow you to upload your pictures to the Picasso Web Album website. That's pretty neat. Now, you do have to have an account, a free Google account. It's um, still free. It's still free. Uh, and the, the hosting is free. We're not going to upload, but here's a previous album. Uh, that I created, and this is what it would look like. This is some pictures from around Palm Beach County. And what's cool about this is, look at all the options here. I can send wow. this photo or send a link to somebody's email address. That's okay? nice. So again, from my camera into Picasso, from Picasso onto the web, click an email, and the pictures go to your friends. So your now everybody your can see them. And now they can see them all online. That's great. The other things that you can do, you can if you have a website, you can actually... Uh, get a link and embed it. Um, oh. You can have an RSS feed. So all sorts of really cool options for sharing online. Now, Lee, my, uh, my wife is a traditionalist. She likes to have pictures in her hand. Oh, okay? print. Huh? I know, I know, I know. That's hard for us geeks. Yeah. And, but that's okay. That's, that's her preference. She I likes know a that. lot of people like that, though. Absolutely. And, and I can understand that. You get some good ones or you want some duplicates mm -hmm. and you send them off. And people like to have them in their hand, put them in an album and that kind of thing. I don't understand it, but that's the way it is. So what's really cool about Picasso is it allows you to send your pictures directly to your favorite photo processor and send it to them. How do and you, how do you do go that? back and, well, right down here at the bottom, again, I've got my pictures selected, mm -hmm. and down here at the bottom I have a uh, button that's called Upload. Now, uh, oh, no, see, that's the album upload, isn't it? Yeah, I that's, don't want to do that. that I want to export. That's what I want. Nope, I don't want to do that either. <laughs> uh, that's what I would do if I... I want to shop. That's there what I want go. to do. I want to shop. And what that's going to do, it's going to take me to this page online where I can choose from any number of providers. Look at all these. Yeah, Snapfish. There's your, let's say you've got a local Walmart. All you've got to do is have an account with them. And you can send it right to the Walmart. Next time you're out shopping, you go down and you pick them up. And they show you prices right in there, too. That's they're right. not bad. So, no, they're nine cents a piece and so forth. So, again, for my wife, she would probably want to use the CVS because we've got one right around the corner. All I've got to do is click on the Choose button, and it's going to prompt me for an account. And when I have an account, I set that up with CVS. Okay. 
and I just go down to my local store and I pick them up. That easy? It's that easy. Oh. And they can be done in an hour. So uh, very, very cool. So Picasso's got a lot of great stuff. So by the time you did this at home and went down to CVS, your pictures would be ready right, Because for you. that's what you're doing now. You're putting them on a disc. You're taking them down there. You're loading them in the machine or giving them to the photo person. That's so great. Come back later on. You know, you can cut all that out. Just go right from Picasso directly to your favorite service. And, and you've got your photographs ready for pickup. Now, Lee, we've got a photo. Oh, we've got a, speaking of uh, things we've got to do here, it's a uh, question of the week day. I'll oh, okay. put my eyes on here so I can see. Uh, and need what's that? Now. What's the address where people can write in, Lee, if they want to have Let's questions? Let's see, it'd be www.com. PalmBreezeCafe.com slash questions. PalmBreezeCafe.com slash questions. Our, our question this week comes from Anthony in Lake Worth. And it says, Dear Lee and Kim, recently I've been getting prompts to turn automatic fishing filter on mm -hmm. when I'm using the Internet. What is this? Should I turn it on? And what in the world is fishing anyway? Yeah, those, well, those let's start with that questions. first question. Yeah. All right. Fishing um, is a, an attempt by a bad guy to get account information from you. What they'll do is they'll send out emails and it will look like it comes from somebody you know. It looks so official. Yeah, from your they're, they're, bank, they're from you. the phone company, from uh, from some service that you've signed up for, from Amazon.com, uh, from PayPal. And they use every trick they can to make it look real to you. I, I got one this week that said, from your friend Richard, click here to join. And it was like, Okay, this looks good. And I just rolled the mouse over it. It was a .exe. Oh, and what's a .exe mean? Well, that's an executable program. They were going to send me a program that oh, was going to grab stuff and send it and back to them. I bet that would not have been a good program. So phishing really comes by email, typically. And if you, time, see, yeah. uh, um, if you see an email and you're not really sure, uh, one of the great tricks is float your mouse over a, a link and mm -hmm. look and see if it's really the, the place. But Microsoft has done some of this work for you, yeah. Internet Explorer 7. And that's what you're seeing when you get that prompt to turn a uh, fishing filter on. Good so the answer, Anthony, for the first question is yes, turn it on. Because what Microsoft does is maintains a database. And it checks the links that come in your email, the request that goes to the browser. Or websites, yeah. Right, uh, based on the legitimate address of the, um, the owner of the site. Yeah. So let's say it's a PayPal phishing equipment, okay? Well, PayPal.com did not send it out. And the phishing filter will catch that. It that's will prevent a very you common from going there. Absolutely, mm -hmm. because any place has got money. So uh, phishing, anything time you see an email mm -hmm. that asks you for account information, username information, login information, any of that information, that's all phishing, and you should ignore them yeah. always. Be very careful. Okay? Be very careful about that, because if those folks get your account information, mm -hmm. um, they can go in and they can order, they can order things uh, in your name and charge them to your credit card account, possibly. They can empty all kinds of things out They can out do of some, a lot of bad things. So it's phishing. Not a good thing. All right, Anthony, that's the way you avoid phishing scams out there. Stay away from people who want your account information, Lee. Go directly to the domain name if you can. If you have to go banking, you type it in. Don't click on their links. All right, so... Uh, Another great question and another great week here at Palm. Oh, sorry. The Peters for the Completely Clueless. And we'll see you next week here where we're going to have another fascinating topic to talk about. Yeah, don't go anywhere. Well, go somewhere. Go somewhere. Come back. Come back next week.